Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. I'm Anna Blunt and today I'm going to be mixing up some paints with mica powders. So I just got this set of uh, mica powder pigments from Let's Resin. So this is the 36 pack. It's got a bunch of little bottles of all different colors. And I also got this 10 pack of chameleon powder mica pigments, which is like a color shifting powder. So those are really, really cool also. And today I'm going to mix up three of them and I want to make a bloom painting with them. So yesterday I mixed up some of these mica powders with Liquitex pouring medium, which makes this wonderful shimmer. But then when I used it on dipping some wine glasses, uh, the mixture was too thin. I think because Liquitex pouring medium is not designed to be a complete, you know, paint texture. It's supposed to be almost a thinning agent when you add it to other paints. So um, when I'm mixing today, I'm going to be using a thicker mixture. I have, this is, this is not varnish. This is an old varnish bottle. So this is a bloom base for doing the Shelly Art bloom technique. It is three parts untinted semi-gloss house paint to one part of polycrylic. So that is a much thicker consistency liquid. This is usually what is mixed with paint or with mica powders when doing the bloom technique. So that's what I'm going to be mixing them with today just to see if the thicker mixture behaves better than straight Liquitex pouring medium. I have a scale. I'll be weighing my ingredients. You know, I'll be, I'll be weighing the, the pouring mixture when I add the powders because I want to learn how much of each I should be adding. But I've got some cups, sticks, couple different measuring spoons. So I have a quarter teaspoon and then I have a smidgen spoon, which is not a very useful measuring tool in the kitchen, but it looks like basically one sixteenth of a teaspoon. So this would be helpful if you just want to measure out a small amount. So then the three uh, mica powders that I'm mixing today are orchid from the regular mica powders and also tangerine. And then from the chameleon powder, I have magenta, which is sort of this, it seems to color shift kind of reddish orange. So I think it'll blend really well with these other ones. One other note is that when you're mixing mica powders, as you open a container or are measuring stuff out, the powder is very fine and it can get into the air. And if you have sensitive lungs to breathing in that kind of stuff, or if you just want to be extra safe, having a mask on hand is a good idea, just so that if dust gets in the air, it does not damage your lungs. All right, so let's do this first color. So I'm going to put a cup and a stick and turn on my scale and get it zeroed out. And then I'm going to, I'm going to mix up about, about half an ounce of each color. Okay, that's 0.6. Close enough. So I'm going to start with orchid. So let me put my mask on. And I think for about half an ounce, I want basically two smidgens, which is about an eighth of a teaspoon. And you could use more if you wanted, but that's what I'm going to start with. Kind of two heaping smidgens. And the nice thing about these bottles is they have, you can either pour out of them or they have a, a little shaker top if you want to just sprinkle some on. So that's very handy. Okay, so now I'm just going to mix this up. So because this um, pouring mixture, it is kind of milky, this color does not look as vibrant as when I was doing just the straight Liquitex pouring medium. But I believe that when it, when it dries, 
it's going to be gorgeous. Okay, so this is a much thicker consistency than what I was working with yesterday, so that's good. This is more like a paint consistency. It's hard to see the shimmer in there. Obviously there's color, but it's hard to see the shimmer. I think it will be hard to see before it is dry. But we'll call that one good. All right, let's mix up tangerine. Make sure you scrape down your sides really well so you don't have any powder sticking to the sides. That is a beautiful color. I think it's going to go so well with the pink. Okay, so I can see shimmer here in the light. It is definitely a iridescent paint. And that'll be so fun to see when it's dry, and especially when it has varnish over top of it. But at least for now, looks great. Okay, last color, the Chameleon Powder Magenta. You see kind of that, it looks pink, but then in here it looks red. That's the color shift based on how it is. It goes from this pink to more of the red. So that's really cool. Right, let's see if we can see that color shift shimmer on the stick. I do see some shimmer. It's hard to tell what's color shifting. It's really interesting because that does not look like the color from the container. I think it looks paler because it's mixed with the milky um, pouring medium. But that looks great. I'm really excited to use these. So those are my three mica powder mixes. And I'll probably choose one regular paint color to go along with those in the bloom that I'm doing. But I will head to that next. Okay, I'm set up. I have a 10 inch by 10 inch canvas. I've got my big spinner set up. So my colors are, of course, the ones that I just mixed. Love these. So they are, that one had a bubble in it. They are sort of a medium thick consistency. They're not super duper thick, but they are thicker than a typical pour paint. And then my other color that I got, this is paint. This is Lemon Yellow by Creative Inspirations. So I think that that will go along with these beautiful pinks and oranges really well. Then my cell activator is Amsterdam Titanium White mixed with water. No Australian Floetrol. If you just add water, it makes a pretty good inexpensive cell activator. And then this is my pillow right here. It's Valspar Semi Gloss. 4000 interior paint, high hiding white. Um, so that's what I'll be using as my pillow paint. And I've gotten some out in a cup so that it's easier for me to use. So I'm going to start by pouring out some pillow paint here in the middle of the canvas. And I'm going to do a standard bloom today. 
That means blown from the center and then spun out. No swiping, just, just blown. Let me add a little bit more. I want to make sure I have plenty. If you have a nice thick layer of pillow, then any cells and design that you make will be able to stretch farther across your canvas. Let me pop some of those air bubbles. Sometimes if you kind of tap it, it'll make the bubbles rise to the surface a little bit faster if you are rushed for time. Okay, so I'm going to start with the yellow, the lemon yellow here in the middle. And it is thicker than my other colors because I didn't, I put in too much paint at the start. Since the other ones are mixed straight into the pouring medium and the yellow paint starts out quite thick, it ended up uh, thicker. But that's why I'm putting it on the bottom so it essentially becomes part of the pillow. I'll torch out some of those because it was full of bubbles. Let's see. I think next I'm going to put some of this chameleon, the color shifting magenta. Because this is kind of the wild card. I think it could be really gorgeous. But the mixed up color is kind of, it's almost more of a rose gold. So I may put a little bit more at the top, but I want to make sure that my um, clementine and fuchsia are nice and prominent. Oh, that's so pretty. Nice. Yeah, I will put just a little bit more of this color shift right there in the middle just to see if we can get a little bit of extra fun. So this has gone slightly off center. Let me get that centered. All right, let me get some air bubbles out. If you don't torch before you blow it out, then any bubbles that you have they're going to make these little pinprick holes in your final bloom. So you want to try to get as many of them out as you can before you even stretch it. Okay, cell activator time. I'm going to pour some right in the middle. Let's blow. That's making beautiful lacing. There's a lot of white still in the middle, so I'm just going to keep blowing. This is super pretty. Okay, let me let it settle just a little bit, and then I will use a straw to try to force up some more cells in those pockets of white. Wonderful, we brought up some more. Let me give this a torch and then we can start spinning. Oh, I'm so excited. This is like the perfect dreamy tropical flower. Super cool, wow. The lemon yellow against the white is almost neon, it's crazy. 
So I'm trying to decide if I do this more like a floating bloom or try to stretch it all the way out to the edge. I think I'd like to try a floating bloom and add some swirls and modifications. So I see Jody Flynn do this thing where she takes a palette knife and scoops up like a point and then she pulls it outwards and it's just crazy. Let me find my... I'm gonna use my flat tipped palette knife and just try scooping it up. Hey, look at that. I've extended a petal. Let me try a couple more of those. That's kind of fun. Neat. I don't want too many of these, just a few. Okay, those edges are softened out, so that's neat. All right, let me do just a little bit of modifications. Okay, so there's a nice little swirl of a center. I really, I'm not good at doing modifications yet. <laughs> so that may be all I do for right now. Even though this would look amazing with some crazy modifications, I'm just not confident enough to do it yet. So let me give it one more torch, spin it out a little bit further, and then I'll give you a close up. This yellow here is getting a little bit out of hand. Like it's pretty, it's just, it's dominating. So I'm going to reshape that petal. Just pull some of the paint off. Put in some more of the pillow just to make sure that it's doesn't end up with a hollow spot there and then I'm gonna add a little bit more pillow here to the corners before I do the final spin Okay, I'm going to give this at least one more spin, and hopefully we'll stop there and be done. Beautiful. That's gorgeous. I wish there was a little bit more on this side, but I, I think if I fiddle with it, it's going to just get bad. So let me give it one final torch, and then I'll give you a close-up. Okay, here we go. I'm not exactly sure which side will be up, but look at that incredible lacing that we got just with Amsterdam paint and water. Really beautiful effects. 
I love these colors together. It's like the perfect tropical flower, like a creamsicle flower or something. Wow, look at that. I love this purple wisp extending off that direction. So cool. And then there is the swirled center, which I really like. It does kind of tie it all back into the middle and make it look like a unified flower. So the shimmer, you can't totally see while it's wet. You can tell there's a bit of shimmer in there. I think it'll look more shimmery when it's dry, so I will show it to you then. So here it is dry. It dried very well. The cells didn't shift or anything. But look at how sparkly and shiny those mica powder paints worked. It's just, oh, it's so pretty. I love how all the colors played together. So you can see the color shifting color somewhat here uh, as that sort of red turns to pink. And, but then the, the tangerine and the orchid are just, they are so pretty. So I'm going to finish this with resin because there were some sort of pock marks from air bubbles that I would like to cover up if possible. So let's go to that next. This was my first time trying resin. I am using the epoxy resin from Let's Resin. And I did two paintings at a time. And so it's just a very simple one-to-one -one mix of the resin and the hardener. And I don't know if you can see from the video, but I am in my full protective gear, including gloves, respirator, uh, safety goggles, and a protective suit. So it's just best to be safe when you're working with resin. I was using the 44 ounce resin kit, beginner's kit, which came with this tool that I'm using to swipe it across. So it's a great kit, comes with pretty much everything you need other than your protective gear. I covered it up to let it cure without dust getting into it, and there you go. So the resin effect is very, very glossy, very shiny. So if you like that look, it is, it would take a lot of coats of regular gloss varnish to make something as shiny and as thick as resin. So obviously there are safety concerns, but it is a very cool effect if you'd like to take the plunge. And the thick varnish just makes the, the sparkles even more so. This is bad lighting, so it's hard to tell the full sparkle of those metallic powders, but it really makes them shine in the right light. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it inspired you to try something new, and maybe you can try some mica pigments for yourself. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever used products from Let's Resin, and I will see you for the next video. Bye!